Uh, very good afternoon and welcoming you, Mohammad Sohail and one more student who is there, 33034. Welcoming you to this. Uh, very bad luck that just two of you are present. What happened? Nobody is interested. Sohail. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. What happened? Why is where are all the other students gone? They are coming, sir. Uh, generally, we have quite a few of them very interested. <clears throat> coming from where? Okay. See, today we start off with module 4 which you see on the screen for me see what believe me what happened i stub uh, uh, um, i tend to believe on time and finish it on time okay so we start uh, and because i've got hell a lot of meetings and so many sessions back to back uh, so that's why uh, the no question of delaying or waiting for anybody today we start as a new module which is module four we have completed three and plus one module. Uh, so four modules we already completed. One, I don't remember the number. Later on one, which is um, uh, we have done on uh, Tableau. Few sessions of Tableau are remaining. We will do that also. We will start off with module four today. Module four today, incidentally, is on predictive analytics. This is exactly the same on the as the syllabus which I had put it on your canvas. This is a wonderful and a very, very wonderful topic and the best of all the topics you can say as present in your course. Predictive analytics is the lifeline or bread and butter for any business big data analyst. There is nothing else other than predictive analytics, which is which a person can think of. And I'll request you, we have to be little bit fast. We have just got eight sessions for you uh, in predictive analytics. And out of eight, two sessions gets over today. So we have to be little fast. And I'll request you, please get into open your Jupyter notebook. Like what you, ca you can see on your screen uh, is your Jupyter notebook. We start off right away coding in Jupyter notebook. And uh, predictive analytics, do you know what is predictive analytics? Sayada, do you know what is predictive analytics? Tell me. Sayada, can you uh, hear me? No, uh, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah yes, what sir. is predictive and what is in, predictive analytics? In predictive analytics, uh, analytics, we are going. The machine is going to uh, learn from itself and going going to give us some outputs or going to arrange the data accordingly, just like uh, unsupervised learning, maybe. Maybe you're maybe, but you're totally wrong. In fact, yesterday I we didn't have a session because I was there at your college. I met your brother, some administrative work. I met your principal and even your chairman. I told him that you it's a bad state that none of you guys are interested in this thing. See, it makes no difference to me. For me, I need to finish. I mean, finish it on the scheduled time. What has been given to me? Okay. Predictive analytics, like I said, is a bread and butter for any big data analyst, for any data miner, any data scientist, anything. Predictive modeling is an art and it is a science. It is the science of unearthing the story impregnated into the silos of data. You are telling about a future event. So we will see on the application of predictive modeling and that to 100% practical application of predictive modeling. Now, please tell me out of you, three of you, how many of you are on laptop? Because I see the first person, 33034, he's like a cricket commentary with mobile. So, Hail, you are also on a mobile. Only Sayada appears to be on laptop. Or is it that Sayada is also on mobile? No, sir, I'm using my laptop. Okay, fine. So please understand. See, uh, if you if we are little bit fast, it will be wonderful. And even one session in between you miss, you will be miles behind. Please understand when you do any project in machine learning or deep learning, you have to first prepare your system. That is, you need to set the boundary condition. And here, setting the boundary condition, whether you're using Jupyter Notebook, whether you're using Google Colab or the standalone version of Python, the commands are exactly the same. First, what you do, you tell Python that, friend, I want to use only Python 3.5 or above. Because in the version Python 3.5 and below, there are many commands which are become obsolete. 
so we tell python and how do we tell we tell and please understand all the programming that we are going to do from today is hundred and thousand percent what the industry wants this is how you tell python that you have to use um, python 3.5 or above you will import sys and then you say uh, assert sys dot version underscore info and this has to be greater than python 3.5 or above say 3 comma 5 that's it I'm telling python what is required and as and when if anybody feels we are going too fast you can please stop me for me is i want to end to end one complete project in predictive modeling next with the most important library in python which is um skykit learn we will tell python please use skykit learn 0.20 or above nothing less than 0 0.20 for which i will import sk learn and i say assert sk learn dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore great 0 0.20 this by this i'll be telling please use sk learn version 0.2 or above thereafter we will go in for some common imports and these common imports are i import numpy as np and i also import os that's it let the previous one finish executing we will execute this there'll be no problem sk learn since because it is a huge huge library it takes few little seconds for it to execute that's all no other reason absolutely no reason just few few seconds for it to execute let's give python it's time for it to pull in sk learn like you can even use google collab don't worry it is one and the same yeah now it's fine now i tell python use numpy these are common imports and import os now just for the reason that all the plotting which i do from here in onwards not only here whether you're working with in industry using machine learning or deep learning these sets of command has to be done before commencement of any session now i'll tell python python please help me plot wonderful plots means beautiful plots pretty plots for which what i'll do i'll say percentage matplotlib inline and i would also say import uh, matplotlib as mpl i would even say import uh, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt then i would specify my axis and then x tick and y ticks i would say mpl dot rc uh, my axis i'll say give it a label size of let me say 14 then i would even say mpl dot rc specify my x tick and give it a font size of let me say 12 then i would even say mpl dot rc go by my y tick give it a label size sorry uh, give it not a font size i mean it will be label size my mistake label size of 12 that's all these are my these commands i've written to make all my plotting what i'm going to do really wonderful means really pretty looking it is rc really pretty looking that's it till here are you comfortable have you done it so one uh, second yeah You have to catch up with me and definitely my suggestion don't miss even a single session. Yes, Come I do. Yeah, even if you miss one se uh, se session, you're kilometers and kilometers behind, which is uh, just no use for you to attend. Then there is absolutely no use for you to attend. Then it's better you can uh, continue. I've got yours, uh, Saida. Yeah, uh, somebody else give me the mail ID, please. I'll forward you one data set. Saida, please uh, just share it with everybody. Data set name is housing.csv. We will be, I, I have sent it already. Please check on your mail. It's out of my mailbox. Check on mail, spam, trash, whatever, junk, all these things. 
you would definitely have found one mail from me and uh, please just share it with everybody we will be using that data set for our complete project and it is a live data set so either have you got the mail of mine one second sir i'm checking yeah the name of the file is housing.csv <laughs> today we don't have really even time to breathe in between there's enough number of uh, enough uh, uh, what is it um, uh, which we have to do it's a huge problem what we need what we need to do and please understand in between we break somewhere it is going to be big big trap for you have you got the mail hunt for sure you would have got the mail yes i got the mail i'm forwarding it yeah please forward it to everybody done shall we start okay please understand whenever you do predictive analytics there are any problem in machine learning there are eight steps for you to complete the problem the first is look at the big picture second get the data third discover and visualize the data to gain insights fourth prepare the data for machine learning algorithms fifth select a model to train it Sixth, fine tune your model. Seventh, present your solution. Eighth, launch, monitor, and maintain your system. Today, these are the eight steps. We will follow all the eight steps in doing this. The first thing is, since the data set has been forwarded to you by Saida, please just open the data set and have a look at it, which makes a big difference. The first is, whatever be the data set, please have a look at the data set. Open it and see. basically the data set pertains to some data of the houses at california and what kind of predictive analytics are we going to do we are going to do a predictive analytics on the very very basic problem that is if the houses in california along the seashore are expensive or not we are going to predict we will see with what accuracy we will be able to predict step 1 what you need to do you need to download the data or read the data all of you are really very, uh, good and i say since you guys say that you are really wonderful in all these things please let's read the data we know how to read the or imp import the data i have to import uh, pandas as pd and i would say uh, that let me um, uh, uh, let me give the vari variable as uh, um housing i will say this will be pd dot read underscore csv with a complete path of my data my data which is there is on my desktop i go copy the complete path where is the data csv i would uh, i would also copy it it is uh, this thing slash housing dot csv now in order to see that the my data is being read i will just call back my variable housing it should read my data that's it now my data 100% it will read this is the data set it has got 20640 rows and 10 columns now since it has uh, this thing the highly professional way of reading a data set is not, this variable we call this housing variable i call just to see that it is reading the data set but the right way for you to read the data set is i should be saying housing dot head this means the top 5 rows it will give me an output of the top 5 rows fine this is more than enough for me to 
understand the variable now since i have understood that it has got some 20640 rows and these are my uh, columns now in the columns you find a, diff a kind of ambiguity except for this column ocean proximity which is categorical rest all are numeric so how is it that i can i do some analysis on a categorical variable what we will do we will convert this categorical to numeric definitely we will do that work upon it now in order to get a better insight of the data what we will do we will run this command of housing.info it will give me a statistics of the data that is it tells me except for this ocean proximity which is an object rest all are uh, numeric but still there is another problem please see the total bedrooms total bedroom has got 20,433 entries west whereas remaining all of them have got 20,640 that means maybe that the total bedrooms there might be some null values some nan value whatever it is that we will uh, explore that data set and definitely we will see what we need to do now since the problem at hand for us is where we have to compute the price of the houses which are along the seashore so for that reason what i'll do along the seashore means i should only target ocean proximity so i and moreover since ocean proximity is a categorical variable we will just do a count of this ocean proximity how do i do the count of this ocean proximity my data set that is housing and within uh, square bra braces ocean proximity and this one dot value underscore counts these all are by simple python which you should also be knowing more than me this says houses which are near ocean are 9136 inland 6551 near ocean are 2658 near bay 2290 and island entries 5 perfect now what i will do i will run the descriptive statistics on this data this is all this i am doing just for me to understand the data well so to run descriptive statistics i am very much sure you are really good in this because you must have learned this concept of descriptive statistics when you were doing all the way way back into excel so we know how to run the descriptive statistics i'll just say housing dot describe it will give me the descriptive statistics of this complete data set it tells me count mean median standard deviation whatever uh, all these things it tells me what um, what is it now for me in order to understand this data set still better presently what are we doing we are just understanding the data set so to understand it still better although this uh, descriptive statistic there are two kind of people on this earth or two kind of machine learning or a predictive analytics professional one who are able to understand from this data the second are the people who want to see visually i i don't mind whether it is uh, uh, in terms of text but for me better it is if i am able to plot the same data visually how do we do the plotting of this data visually i'll say percentage um, plot lib in line then what i do i will import uh, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt then i create a histogram and for creating a histogram you guys know what to do i'll say housing dot hist of specifying the number of bins in the histogram let me say 50 bins i also have to specify my figure size which i would say let it be 20 comma 15 so this will give me my figure size what i want now what i would show although i need not write this plt dot show because this is a command which is specific to spider even if you don't write it you will get wonderful plots so i will get multiple plots on one single sheet of the latitude longitude housing median age total room total bedroom population median income everything i get the thing for all the houses now looking at this data as a professional you should be able to infer so till here you can write something because all of you remain silent that gives me big scare whether you're understanding or it is just that like a cricket commentary i'm saying something saida are you able to understand what i'm saying 
Tell me. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Please write down this okay. what uh, all these commands what uh, what I've uh, written on the screen so that we get going with what we need to do. So can you just scroll up a little? Yeah. And trust me, friends, this is the highly professional way of doing anything in machine learning or predictive analytics. Being very frank with you, the same is the exactly same as the thing which I conduct for a session for the students at United States of America. And also uh, there is parallelly a session going on at Bangalore, which is there on every Sunday for DRDO employees, Defense Research Development Organization employees, as well as Bell employees, Bharat Electronic Limited employee. I've just had this uh, thing what I've shown you in, the, uh, in on the last Sunday. So it is the same, maybe little changes here and there I do, as and when what comes to my mind. So if you return this, can I go down? Yes, sir. Yeah, you may write the next command for plotting the histogram. In fact, you should not be writing this since all this should be very clear in your mind. So where is the question of writing all this? You should be able to write it on your own. Why, Saida, am I right or wrong? Yes, sir, you're right. Yeah, you should be writing it all your own, on your own. There should be no question of writing. I'm just uh, logic. I'm keep. I'm telling you logic. What I'm doing and the same thing I'm putting it in words. At least by doing this complete problem in your eight sessions, you will understand how difficult it is to do predictive analytics. We have just we are presently just exploring the data. Have you done this? Yes, sir, done. Okay, now please tell me. Now, see if I want to run this program and say I have got random values in any data set or any kind of values, and I want that irrespective of the number of iterations of the program, I want a, the same output to appear each time. What should I be doing? Tell me, please. What is that I should be doing? I should be specifying a seed value. Let me specify a seed value. So I say np.random.seed. Let me give a seed value of 42. So it says irrespective of the number of iterations of mine, the output would be the same. Now what I will do, I will now split my data set into uh, train and test. And I would see what is the length of my training set and the length of my test set. Uh, so in order to do that, we have two different ways to do. The first way is I'll show you right away. What I will do, I will import NumPy as NP. I would define uh, split. And please understand the splitting, what we do is only of the training data set. Uh, training, uh, train and test. I want to split the data into train and test. I say it is my data and my test ratio. And I make this conditional. Then I say my shuffled indices, which is nothing but NP dot random dot uh, permutation of the length of my data. Thereafter, what I do, I specify my test set size. I say that my test set size is nothing but my integer of the length of my data. This whole thing will be times my test underscore ratio. After this, what do I do? I specify my test and train indices. So I say test indices, which will be nothing but my shuffled data, that is my shuffled indices uh, times it will be my test set size. Test set size. And this I have told my test indices. Now I need to tell my train indices, which will be nothing but my shuffled uh, indices of my test set size. 
and now what I need to do definitely I need to return back my data so I say data dot I location index location of my uh, train underscore uh, indices as well I would say my data dot I location of my test underscore indices let's execute and see great it says it's fine now what I do see generally when you split that data into train and test big people on this earth who have done innumerable amount of work they have told it is ideal that you split the data into 70 30 or 80 20 because anything other than this they say you won't get good results that means see there are many millions of people who have worked on this mathematically they found out relation how to do it why should, why is it that 70 30 why 80 20 we will exactly follow them because we are big data analysts or data scientists we are not mathematicians since the work has already been done i'll just take their work i'll say i'm going to split this data into 80 20 that is 20 percent testing 80 percent training so for what i would say train underscore set my test underscore set is nothing but my split train test of my housing and how do i want to split 80 20 so 20 means 0.2 and apart from now after this let me find out the length of my train data set so when i find out the length it says it is 16512 let me also find out my length of my test data set when we do this it tells me it is 4128 see currently what are we doing we are just understanding this data we are not doing anything we are not doing anything great we are just understanding the data how it is or the spread of this data after this what we you can write this you can write this 12 13 14 and 15 what i've written so that we are together and we can go together Uh, there is a session which is being conducted by IET Bangalore Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers Bangalore it's a government of India society it's a, a course on hands-on Python from very very z z ground zero level for working professionals of drdo that is defense research development organization and bell bharat electronics limited that we have had only one session which was last week and i am the trainer for them if you guys are interested i'll forward you the advertisement you can directly get in touch with iet and register yourself I don't give this uh, credentials to anybody those are the guys and end of the course they will give you a certificate very very valid certificate and very this is first and very very shortly they are going to start a uh, what is internship in artificial intelligence and machine learning hands-on internship which will be conducted by Institute of Electronic and Telecommunication Engineers Bangalore for multiple students all around the country you are interested practically 100% practical you're interested you may get in touch with you can google it out and see iet bangalore the certificate is very valid because it's a government of india society okay have you done till here 15 of mine yes sir okay they'll see although this 13 what i've done is one way to do this there is another way to do this some people say why should i break my head in this way there are some so many things which i don't understand alternately what you can do you can import this train test split which is a part of this sklearn library so i'll say from sklearn dot model underscore selection i will import my train test and split now what I will do, I'll say my train data set, my test data set, then with these two train and test data set will be my train um, uh, test split 
of my housing data set and I would say what will be my test data set size. It is 20% of 0.2 and definitely now I have to specify a random state which I'll give the same one which we had chosen earlier. Execute this. It should not give me error. Now what I'll do after splitting this data into this way, I will see or go through this data for which I would use the head command. I'll say test underscore set dot head. It will give me the first five rows of my data set. Fine. Looking at this data set, I get good enough information. I expect you will also should be able to get good enough information because you have already done a, uh, a structured course which your institute has made you guys do in Python. So you definitely should be able to understand or infer data from this. Are we together? Somebody tell me, please, if I completed this. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so who is going to help me out? Will it be Saida or somebody else who will tell me, see, the same data set, I want a histogram plotted. So how, what, what am I going to do? What will be the syntax? Please understand. Okay. See, for this data set, the most important column or uh, the, the dependent well, the variable dependent for this variable is, is median income. Median so income. what I will do, so I'll plot will a uh, histogram on the median income. I'll say housing of median underscore income and I would say dot hist. It will give me a histogram and please understand all the commands which we are using over here all state of art commands no older commands now although it has given me um, the histogram i what i want to do i want to cut this data set so can you tell me which is that function in python which will help you cut this data set i want to cut this data set because here what you will see most of this median income values are clustered between let me say between 2 and 2.5 see the peak at 2.53 it is very high so i want to cut the data set and separately understand this uh, median income so what i will do for which i'll take my variable as housing of this since this uh, i would take this column of income category which I take as my variable I would say run this Python function pd dot cut and pd cut of what I want to cut I want to cut the housing data set of the median income now apart from this what do I need to do I have to specify my bins in my histogram I'll say let my bins be 0 dot 1.5 I would say 3.0 uh, then the 4.5 and 6 dot and I want this to take infinite values so I say np dot inf so after this what do I need to say I want some labels also to be provided so I say my labels are <coughs> 1 2 3 4 5 and these are my labels let me execute it oh this says there is my error me oh spelling of median no problem typographic error fine now I have found this now although I have cut this uh, median income I want the individual values for this so the variable that I have taken here is housing of this income cat so I would say this income category dot value underscore counts so this should give me the individual value of all the uh, peaks in this for three it is seven to three six all the way from one to five it gives me a fair enough value of all this median income how it is spread now what i need to do like i said there are two kinds of people some people might understand from this whereas the other people will say let me see something and then i would understand so we will help those guys also i'll say housing of my income underscore cat and let's plot a histogram so i said dot his it will give me my histogram so it gives me my uh, 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 it gives me my histogram for all these things so till here you will have to tell me your together what my ears are very very eager to listen from you that please go still more faster 
Shaida, how about going more faster than this? Uh, no, sir. Like, uh, no. We'll, we'll follow this, please. <laughs> okay, fine. So, because, see, all this might be good for you to listen to it at this minute. Minute you shut down your computer, it becomes a dream. You will not know what is written where. That is why I'll request you, please do one thing, write ample comments and keep. That's very, very essential. Okay. Are we through till here? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, see, what is that we have done? We have split this median income into separate uh, you can say separate uh, uh, you can say buckets that is what is what we have done in simple English we have done a stratified sampling over here now what I need to do now I would say that we have we have split this income into different strata now we are very very much ready to do stratified sampling based on the income category for which I need to import SkyKit learns stratified shuffle split class so let's go ahead and import stratified shuffle split from sklearn library. I would say from sklearn dot model underscore selection, please import stratified shuffle split. And now I would say my split, which I take as the variable is nothing but this stratified shuffle split, which I'll just cop uh, copy the stratified shuffle split, specifying my number of splits as one and definitely my test size, which we have been going test data set size is 20 percent. So 0.2 and I would also have to specify my random state, which we go by the same thing which we had used earlier 42. Now what I need to do, I need to find out what is my stratified training set what is my sorry what is my stratified train set what is my stratified test set for which there is only one person who can help you you know who is that it is the for loop so i'll say for train underscore index test underscore index in um split dot split of my housing and of my income category of the housing so i'll say income underscore cat and making this definitely conditional i would now say my strat uh, training set is my housing dot my location of my train underscore index please understand friends if you are able to follow this complete example end to end there is no way that in the industry anybody would stop you from becoming a machine learning engineer or being a predictive analyst it is wonderful but it is difficult even you may do this problem hundreds and thousands of times still you will come out with lots of error syntax error i would say my strat test set is nothing but my housing dot my location of my uh, uh, test underscore index we will execute it perfect python says it's good now what i need to do i need to find out what is my stratified test set so how do we find out my stratified test set for which i'll say my strat test set of my income category income underscore cat this whole thing uh, dot my uh, value underscore counts this one should be divided by the length of my stratified test set that's why please remember for you to excel in big data analytics you have to be excellent in uh, statistics using python for stat you have to know statistics that's true but using python it is a totally different ball game for you to understand it calls for a different skill level for you to understand statistics using python okay now we have found out this what is the stratified test set now what i need to do i want to also i want to do the uh, i have to also run one more for formula that is we will start by looking at income category proportion in the test set which is what i have got over here 
okay since i've got this income category proportion which is the one which you see over here now what you need to do you need to count this income category proportion for which what i will be doing see this is what we have written over here is one way of doing it the other way of doing it is you can even say housing of uh, <coughs> income underscore cat dot value underscore counts divided by the length of housing this is the other way of doing it you will see results are exactly the same little bit of change here and there it's okay it's both are one and the same both are exactly one and the same the technique is both one and the same now what i need to do after we have done all these things i uh, we would uh, be required uh, to find out the income category proportion why do we need to find out the income category proportion because the by writing some code in python this will compare the income category proportion in the whole data set in the test data set generated with the stratified sampling and in a test set generated purely using random sampling you will be able to see the test set generated using stratified sampling has income category proportions almost identical to those in the full data set whereas the test set generated using purely random sampling is skewed so you should be knowing the meaning of all these things minute i say it is skewed you should be knowing what do you mean by this so in order to find the income category proportion what do i do can somebody help me out because i'm tired speaking for the last 40 minutes continuously so can somebody help me out what do i do to find out the income category proportions i have to define a function so i'll say income cat proportions of my data conditional and i return my data of this income category income underscore category this i would do a value count of this value underscore counts and this one and let me divide it by the length of data are we are you all following me or are you left behind somewhere fatim zora are you with me tell me who feels you got left behind yes sir you're with me fatim, with me, fatim. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Okay, so now, great. since we are for defining this income category proportion, let me also say train underscore set test underscore set. This thing is my train test split of which data set? My housing data set. And definitely, I need to specify my test size, which is 0.2, 20%. And also my random state which we are taken as 42 now what i do we will compare um, the the proportion of the this data set for which i take compare underscore props as my variable which is which you know which you surely would be knowing how do i do i'll create a data frame using uh, uh, dictionary values so what i do my first is I say my overall data set, which is nothing but my income underscore cat underscore proportions of my housing, uh, housing data set, my housing. Now, apart from this, what else do I do? I also find uh, my stratified sampling, which I've done on this data set. I say stratified, which is nothing but my income underscore cat underscore proportion of my my stratified test set then what else is left i need to also find out my random values for this data set which i would say is nothing but my income cat proportions of my test set that's it and give a comma that's it now this whole thing i have to sort it by index so i said dot sort underscore index 
and this will help me sort this whole thing by index now what happens i have to compare this error percentage of what i have done by random sampling as well as stratified sampling so for which i would say my compare underscore props of my uh, rand dot and i would say percentage error this whole thing would be 100 times my compare underscore props of my random this would be divided by my compare underscore props of my overall and this has to be minus 100 see this mathematical equation i just drew it in my mind you have to be such that you are able to draw it in your mind and execute this thing now the same thing will stand good for random error the other one stratified error i'll copy the same thing instead of rand i'll replace it with my stratified error percentage so this would be the same compare props of instead of random i would say uh, i stratified and i would compare the props of this now when i execute it okay spelling compare props is not defined compare proportion not defined one second there's some spelling mistake oh there is double r i had put this is all spelling mistake perfect it is fine python says great go ahead where are you are you people writing it or just seeing it like a cricket match my suggestion would be please write it writing so yeah and please tell me when you're completed Writing also, you cannot take a huge amount of time. We need to take some definite time so that we don't miss out on what we are doing. We have to do predictive analytics on this uh, California housing data set. Here, one good thing in Python is one small thing you miss here or there, everything, it throws a big, big error to, for you. <laughs> in fact, Till this 27 what I have written you should be telling me don't write it we'll write it ourselves we are really good enough in Python excuse me sir yeah uh, can you scroll up a little sir till 17 just once yeah thank you sir Saida, can I scroll it down? Yes, sir. It was for Fat. It was for okay. was for Fatim, sir. Sorry. <laughs> you would like to tell me when you completed it.
done sir done okay so uh, now what we are doing we are just comparing the error proportion now since we have done all this calculation we are not getting any output it's not com comfortable so what i'll do i'll say compare underscore props so minute i do this it will tell me all the error percentage whether it is overall error stratified random error random percentage error and stratified percentage error fine till now please understand we are just playing around with the initial data set we have not started doing anything in predictive analytics now what i need to do see if you remember sometime back we had created a column by the name of income cat an attribute income category i have to drop it because for the reason that i want my data back to the original position so what we will do for for us to drop it i'll say for set underscore in oh sorry uh, uh strat train underscore set and i say strat test underscore set making this conditional i'll say set underscore uh dot drop drop please my income category so i'll say drop my income category go along the column so axis equal to one and i have to also say my in place equal to true so this will help me knock off my income category this thing in in this now please understand we have spent quite some time on this test set feature generation for some good reason this is often neglected but a very very critical part of this predictive analytics now moreover many of these ideas will be useful later when we discuss cross validation have you learned about this cross validation techniques in python tell me yes or no no sir okay please under don't worry you are not the only person more than 90% of colleges in india don't cover cross validation even when they are learning machine learning they don't do this because the only problem is faculty themselves don't know what it is but without cross validation you just cannot create a model i would say that is a fact in today's industry you just cannot do anything but all colleges are very happy it is not only isl everybody is the condition is the same now what we will do we will discover and visualize the data to gain insights see so far you have uh, only taken a quick glance at the data to uh, to get a general understanding of the data that you are manipulating now it is that uh, time is to go into it a little more deep first what we will do we will make sure that uh, you have put the test data aside and you are only exploring the training set also if the training set is very large you may want to sample an exploration set why to make manipulations easy and fast so in our case the test is quite small so you can just work directly on the full data set so what we are going to do we will start off by creating a copy of this data set so that we can play around with it without harming the main data set how do we do it definitely i know all of you from isl would be comfortably be able to do it to create a copy of the data i take my variable as uh, uh, housing i say this is strat train underscore set dot copy this will help me create a copy of the data set it will give me a copy of this data set now what i need to do we are now what we have done we have taken a copy of the train data set now is the right time let's go channelize our efforts go in the right direction we have to visualize the geographical data of california see this is a there is a you know when you visualize the data of any place there has to be longitude and latitude and it is a good idea and a really the practical way how you can create a such kind of plots is using scatter plot there is no other way how you can visualize the data set so let's visualize this california housing data set using scatter plot all of you are really good can uh, who can tell me will saida fatima who will tell me and how do i create uh, uh, the scatter plot for this california housing data set initial scatter plot how will i do it anybody there are two options for you. you either you can tell me or you can say i don't know so saida which one do you choose the second one sir second one know. okay uh, we would say it is housing 
dot plot and what kind of a plot do, do I need? I need a scatter plot. I would say I need a scatter plot on the x axis. Let me have longitude and on the y axis, let me have my uh, uh, latitude. That's it. So one simple line and it will give me a wonderful plot of this California housing data set of this. Now the big, big problem with this plot, nobody on this entire earth can tell you what is in this plot. So in order for you to, because it is totally cluttered around, the dots are so cluttered, you really won't know what it is, whether it is a housing data set or it's some child who has done painting. So what we will do, we will introduce a small thing. We will introduce a concept called alpha in this. I introduce an alpha value. It will give me a better way how I visualize this plot. So how do I do it? Exactly the same thing I'll copy. And here at the end, I would say alpha is 0.1. That's it. The minute I execute it, it gives me a better plot. That is these dark areas which you find in the plot. These are the places where the density of houses are really high. But still with this plot also, I cannot understand what it is. I am not in a position to understand what this is. So what I'll do, I'll make this plot little more beautiful. That is apply some more lipstick to this plot. How am I going to do this? I'll say my housing dot plot and the kind I need is scatter. And I would say on my X axis, please have my longitude and Y axis. Let me have my latitude and definitely I'll go with the alpha value still more lower. So let me say 0.4. Apart from this, I would define two variables, a variable called S, which will give me my population. So housing, since it being the main data set, housing of my population, as with this whole thing, I'll divide it by 100. And then for me to clearly see what these dots are, and label, let me give it as population and I have to specify my figure size. Let me say my figure size is 10 comma 7. Apart from this, I would define another variable C, which I will call it as my median house value. And I have to specify a color map. So I say C map, which I'll be using, which kind of a color map I'll use, I'll use jet. It is very much preferred these days anywhere in the world by this uh, professionals who do uh, predictive analytics. So I'll say plt dot get underscore C map. What do I want? I want the jet type map and what I need. I need little more lipstick to be put on this plot. So I say my color bar equal to true. Apart from this, I would say, please, please, please share my x-axis. So I say share x, no sorry, I'll say don't share my x-axis. So I say share x equal to false. And I also want a legend on this plot. So I say plt dot legend. That's it. When I hit run, I will get a beautiful plot. Now my plot is really good with a lot of lipstick applied to it. It looks more pleasing for me to look at it. You may kindly write this and let me know please. After that we can go ahead. And definitely when you write it, I'll request you, please write a lot of comments.
you'll have to do it and tell me please there is no way i can uh, know if you're uh, you're you're done it or not done it the only way i'll come to know is if you tell me what that you've done it <laughs> And when you do it, please execute it and see if you're getting the same plot. It's important that you get the same plot. It's not writing something which makes no meaning or no sense what you've written. Done, sir. Done. Okay. So you see more than writing it. I want you even to write comments so that uh, it is useful for you the next time when you open it. Otherwise, it will again be a puzzle for you when you open it. You will not know what it is. See what does this image show? This image of the or this thirty-three of mine. This image shows that the housing prices are very much related to the location. That is the closeness to the ocean and the population density. And now, now how how do we proceed ahead? If I want to detect the main clusters in this, because when you see see there are some places where there are quite a lot of these dots, blue colored dots. See this, there are some huge amount of dots here, some huge amount here, some huge amount here, some over here. So what I need to do, pure logic tells us that I should proceed with some kind of a clustering algorithm, which should be useful for detecting the main clusters. and also for adding new class new features that measure the proximity to the cluster center now the ocean proximity attribute may be useful as well although um, we we when you go through the history in northern california the house prices in coastal district are not too high so it is not necessary that it is a common rule so what we need to do since the data set i would say which is there with us it's not too large it's about 10 20000 columns so i should proceed by looking for correlation in the data set so how do i find out the standard correlation coefficient or otherwise what is the name given for standard correlation coefficient in mathematics who can tell me what it is <laughs> tell me please if i want to find out the standard correlation coefficient in mathematics uh, what is the name given to the standard correlation coefficient in mathematics <sighs> tell me see you are in no time going to finish your engineering see really to be very frank i don't want you to be like the millions of engineers in india who really don't know what is engineering recently about uh, just before this covid broke out i had met a person close to my residence close to my residence is bagmani tech park all multinational companies are there over here most of the multinational companies so one of the tech parks in bangalore at that place when i met a person he was smiling giggling and he was walking around on the road 
incidentally he happened uh, to ask me what is the time at that time i told him friend you appear very happy he told i got a job it's a f- serious thing what i'm telling you i got a job i told great what kind of job he told i got a job in bpo that is call center welcome to vgard may i help you please i told friend why what is so di- difficult getting a job in gob uh, in call center in half a minutes time you can get a job anywhere in india in call center he told no he told i am a post graduate i have not got any job in my post graduation that is he has done his mtech in computer science he does not know what is computer science and he is working in a call center it is not his case alone you walk down to kerala 99% of taxi drivers are all mtech computer science mtech electronics big big degrees degrees are big but they are taxi drivers no jobs because they themselves don't know what is engineering for the sake of it they have done engineering i don't want you guys to be that way definitely if not everybody at least handful of you prove your metal you would really be grateful to me few more years down the line that i have told you something valuable otherwise you are one one more among this huge uh, group of engineers who are totally useless and then you would become bead me khoya admi i don't want you to be in that way so what we will do we will look for correlation in this data and see i said the standard correlation coefficient is also called as pearson's r coefficient which what we will do we will compute the standard correlation coefficient between every pair of attribute and how will i compute compute i'll use the corr method the correlation method so i will use this definitely find out the relation between um the uh, the uh, every pair of attributes so how do i proceed first what i would do i would say corr underscore matrix of my uh, median house value this i want to sort it out sort underscore values and i don't want it in ascending order so i will say my ascending equal to false that's it so i am going to sort this data set first corr underscore matrix is not defined no problem so what i am going to do just add one more line here corr underscore matrix is nothing but my housing dot corr that's it that should take care of it it tells me what these values are that's it it tells me the median house value median income total room house median age house sold total bedroom population longitude latitude everything everything it tells me in this so it gives me some kind of a fair enough picture in this now please understand all the values here this coefficient correlation correlation coefficient tells us that the values range from generally minus 1 to plus 1 and when it is close to plus 1 what does it mean it means there is a strong positive correlation now for example the median house value tends to go up when the median income goes up now when the coefficient is close to this minus 1 it means that there is a strong negative correlation and you can see a small negative correlation between the latitude and the median house value that is you can say the prices have a slight tendency to go down say when you go northwards and finally all these coefficients close to zero mean that there is no linear coefficient so this is what you infer from data so there are another group of people who say this kind of what you have written this data set is not very appealing to me i want it in the form of plot perfect we will even take care of them for which what i'll do i'll say from pandas dot plotting i will import my scatter uh, scatter matrix then i would say my attributes is nothing but my uh, median house value and what else i need to even take care of my median income also what do i need to take care of my total rooms and what else do i need to take care of i need to also lastly take care of the housing median age so i say housing median age that's it now what i'll do i need a scatter plot for all this i am not happy so i say my scatter underscore matrix 
of my my housing the attributes of the housing so i say housing of attributes and here what i need to specify like earlier i have to specify my figure size let me say i want a 12 by 8 figure and now when i execute this i should get my plots i will get some wonderful plots great great wonderful plot you may write this and let me know please till the time let me attend if is it or do i need to scroll a little more down is this fine tell me why is that all of you silent? silent yes yes sir. okay fine please okay, write fine. this i'll get please back to you this, i'll get back to you Done? Have you done it? <laughs> Don't worry, we have still not written any everything in Python. Python is very, very powerful. We are just going step by step so that you don't get lost somewhere in between in what we are doing. Kindly let me know so that let's go down and continue our race. Yes, sir. Let's continue. Okay, fine. So let go, uh, Sada. You don't want to write anything. Oh, are you writing Sorry, it? Sir? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Have you got all this plot? Have yes, you got sir. The same plot? Okay. Now, when you look at this plot, um, uh, that is from the top left. When you go diagonally, see this. When I go diagonally in this plot. I have got plots in the main diagonal and uh, this is uh, um, ideally this main diagonal should be of full straight lines if pandas is plotted each variable against itself which would not be very very useful so instead what pandas does it displays a histogram of each attribute and the most promising attribute to predict the house median value is the median income that is please see over here see when you predict the house median uh, uh, when you say you want the house median value ideally it is a median income there is no use of no rooms and the median age or anything so what we will do we will go by the plot of house median value and median income we will zoom on this median income and we will see what does this reveal reveal so how do we zoom on in Python? Who can help me out? I would say housing dot plot. And once again, what I want, I want a scatter plot. I would also specify what is my X value, which I would say is my median income and also specify my Y value, which I would say is my median house value. I specified my X and Y value. Also, let me specify my alpha value. So let me say it is 0.1. And now what I need to do, I need to specify my axis. So to specify my axis, pretty simple. I would say PLT dot axis. And on the X axis, let me have from 0 to 16. 
on the y axis let me have from 0 to uh, 5 lakh 50000 okay that's it let me now get into the plot of this i would get my plot something of this kind i've got the median how the median house value alpha 0 to 16 and 0 to 5 lakh 50000 oh there's too much of uh, too many zeros are there in this okay 5 lakh 50000 perfect i'll get a plot of this kind <laughs> too many zeros i'd put in the plot are we together till here yes sir now as a big data analyst please tell me something about this plot who can help me out i have told bachao help me out who will help me out see this plot reveals a few things first the correlation is indeed very very strong and you can see an upward trend and the points are not too dispersed secondly the cap price that we have noticed earlier is clearly visible by a horizontal line at the top see this horizontal line at the top but when i still try to look at this plot with more uh, attention i find another horizontal line here there is another one more horizontal line here there is one more over here so many horizontal lines so what i want to do i am i have got very desperate i want to zoom in on this plot so that look at this uh, uh, plot in a much better way so in order to do this plot in a much better way the first what i would do I would say that the total number number of bedrooms by itself is not very useful. See, I would like to compare it with the number of rooms and the population per household also seems like an interesting attribute combination to look at. So before we do anything with the plot, let's play around with the rooms per household, the bedroom per room and the total bed, bedroom per room and the population per household, which is very important when I'm predicting something on the house. So how do I do it? I would say my housing of my uh, rooms per household. And this would be nothing but my housing of my total rooms. Uh, divided by my housing of my household you have to visualize these mathematical formulas in your mind if you don't do it then it is just copying something then also I would say housing of my uh, bedrooms per room is nothing but my housing of total bedrooms and it should be this divided by total rooms so it will be housing of total rooms and the last one i have to also find out what is my house housing population per household i'll say population per household which is nothing but my it definitely population per household will be what is my total population divided by how many household houses are there so i'll say the same thing let me put in words which python will understand so housing of population divided by my housing of this um, households so let me execute it perfect are we together till here? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Now, without no. wasting any time, let me do the justice for which we have met up over here. First, let me take your attendance. Since you're not too many of you, I can just like that take your attendance. We don't need to do this. 33011. Okay, let me call you out all you guys here. Uh, 63956. Sure, you should be absent. um three three zero zero eight three three zero five four three three zero five six present sir 
present. Okay. The 733075, 733076, 733084, 7370102073 733 Present, sir. 733-005. 733-005. 733-008. 733-009. Absent. And 009 is absent. 733-010. 733-012. 733-013. 733-014. 733-015. 733037 Seven double three zero three eight, seven double three zero three nine, seven double three zero four one, seven double three zero four two, seven double three zero double four, seven double three zero five three, seven double three zero five four, seven double three zero five six. Present, sir. Okay, seven double three zero five seven. Seven double three zero five eight, seven double three zero five nine, seven double three zero six two, seven double three zero seven zero, seven double three zero seven four, seven double three zero double seven, seven double three zero eight zero, seven double three zero eight five, seven double three zero eight six, seven double three seven triple three zero two. Seven three seven double zero one, seven three seven double zero four, seven three seven double zero eight. Sir, four is present. Four is present. Yes. Okay. Seven three seven double zero nine, seven three seven zero one three, seven three seven zero one four, seven three seven zero one five. Seven three seven zero one six, seven three seven zero one seven, seven three seven zero one nine, seven three seven zero two zero, seven three seven zero two one, seven three seven zero double two, seven three seven zero two four, seven three seven zero two five, seven three seven zero two seven, seven three seven zero two eight, seven three seven zero two nine. Seven three seven zero three one, seven three seven zero double three, seven three seven zero three four, seven three seven zero three nine, seven three seven zero four zero, seven three seven zero four two, seven three seven zero double four, seven three seven zero four six, seven uh, seven three seven zero five two, seven three seven zero five three. Seven three seven double three double zero two, seven double three double zero three, seven double three double zero four, seven double three double zero seven, seven double three double zero eight, seven double three zero one one, seven double three zero one two, seven double three zero one three, seven double three zero one four. Seven double three zero one four second seven double three zero two one seven double three zero two four seven double three zero two five seven double three zero two nine seven double three zero three one 
seven double three is zero three three four. Three four. Present sir. Yeah, seven double three zero three five. Seven double three zero three five is absent. Seven double three zero three six. Seven double three zero three seven. Seven double three zero three eight. Seven double three zero four five. Four seven. Seven double three zero four seven. Seven double three zero five six. Present. Seven double present. Okay. Seven double three zero five seven. Seven double three zero six one. Seven double three zero six three. Seven double three zero six four. Seven double three zero six five. Seven double three zero six six. Seven double three zero six seven. Seven double three zero six eight. And seven double three zero six nine. Seven double three zero seven one. Seven double three zero seven two. Seven double three zero seven three. Seven double three zero seven four. Seven double three zero seven five. Seven double three zero eight zero. Seven double three zero eight one. Seven double three zero eight three. Seven double three zero eight eight. Seven double three zero nine four. Seven double three one zero four. Seven double three one zero six. Seven double three double one four. Seven double three double one four absent. Seven double three double one five. Seven triple three zero one. Seven triple triple three zero two. Seven triple three zero three. Seven triple three zero four. Seven triple three zero four absent. Syed Ahmad. M A Atif. Mohammad Azhar. Asra Amrin. Mirza Asif Beg. Safi Farooqi. Syed Musa bin Hafiz, Riyan Hashmi, S D Inayat, Nihal Khan, Syed Madani, Abdul Mubin, Syed Matin, Abdul Mujahid, Present Sir. Okay. Syed Numan, Muhammad Khadir Khadri. Syed Shabas, Sana Sultana, Rutherford Thompson, Saifuddin, Muhammad Zainuddin, Abdul Basir, Syed Mutalib Ahmed, Abu Ansari, Mudassir Muhammad, Fais Kadri. Sheikh Shoaib, Syed Shah Zohib. Wonderful. But tell me one thing: Is there any particular reason why you guys are not attending, or is it that it is too simple, or second reason is it that is it too boring, or is it that it is just blowing out of your head? Whatever. Do one thing. This kind, of what we have done till now, please save it. The next session which we do tomorrow, we'll commence it from here. We will not go backward. We will start off from here. So kindly save this work and keep. And I'm sure you know how to save it. I need not uh, repeat it. Please save it and keep. Tomorrow, just copy it, execute all the cells. We start off from here. Okay. So kindly, let's. So kindly, uh, you know how do you save it? File on click. Click on file. Download as IPYNB. I'll save it as an IPYNB file. It is saved tomorrow. I once again call this data set and commence from here. Has anybody got anything to ask me till here? There is incidentally, I think tomorrow there is an MCQ for yours of yours. Please check the canvas. I think it is at six o'clock tomorrow or day after tomorrow. I don't know. Just check. I think it is tomorrow. A graded assignment and in and the marks when you see it is scary when I see your marks on the canvas. I think just one of you has got. I have got. I think fifty one plus percent. That's all. Rest many in zero, and many single digit. So the you, test is in uh, module three, मतलब MongoDB or uh, whole syllabus till here up till now. No, only MongoDB, only MongoDB. Okay, sir, thank you. And uh, in uh, one more thing, when we complete predictive analytics, I'll give you a uh, an opportunity to write a program for me, something similar to this. But it will be different. You have to understand what is what needs to be written, what needs to be done. 
ओके चलो आई वुड ओनली टेल यू थैंक यू हैव ए नाइस डे वी विल मीट अप टुमारो एट द सेम टाइम थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच